Hi traders and welcome to the Technical Analysis Market Watch on Friday the 23rd of February. So I've seen some record highs again on the S&P 500 this week and we've seen some very, very volatile action on the currencies in the last 24 hours. So we'll jump straight into the charts and see if we can identify any trades for today or early into next week. All right, so we'll start out here with the Aussie USD, and we can see that we've got a very, very big wick candle on the basically today's uh, trading candle. I'll zoom it in a little bit, and you can see that we've had a very, very big attempt at actually going long from here all the way up to 65, basically 95 on that candle, and we've pulled all the way back down to 65 basically 50. The 20 moving average is certainly doing its job pulling this one up. We know that there's very strong resistance just ahead here, and the 20 moving average has basically held this one at bay for the last five candles, basically all week. So you can see that we've had three attempts uh, only in the last three days of wicks attempting to go into the high 65s, uh, and all of them have actually failed. Now, if this candle actually does maintain um, the level that it's at and finishes and closes with this action it's going to be a very negative connotation on the aussie usd for moving forward because the buyers have certainly tried to push this one up and failed yeah quite uh, quite dramatically actually for the last three times especially in today's candle now there is still a little bit of action to go like you know there's a few hours of trading uh, yet to see if it can actually maintain this level but it would be a very, very strong sign, especially if we're trading here on Monday, that this level is probably set to hold and weakness will probably kick into the Aussie USD. Now, the easy way to trade this one, of course, is if we do continue that um, weak trend and we start to see a series of lower highs and lower lows on a smaller time frame, the obvious target's going to be in the first instance at 64.50 area. Uh, that's the place that was already tested and that's the most likely scenario for a, a test again on the short. But Look, if we get a close, I wouldn't be looking at long opportunities on this one until we actually are trading above the 50 moving average with a daily candle. So really getting above that 65.80 mark uh, with a daily close though, not just with a um, price action. Obviously, we've already had that, but it needs to have a daily close up there because that's the only time that the uh, bulls are actually going to win that war and momentum may actually kick in. But you can see a similar scenario to what happened over here. We had a lot of resistance at this level and once it did actually reject off it several times over, it did the same thing, wicks everywhere. Once it did fall, it fell down to those lows. So still in a very, very critical zone. Uh, the bottom of the neckline still fighting uh, for dear life to try and stay underneath that neckline. The buyers have tried and failed several times. So really let the, um, the games decide themselves. I wouldn't be getting involved until we actually get a clear direction, either trading above the 65, 80 area uh, with a daily close or if we see a series of lower highs and lower lows in a smaller time frame, and we start trending lower than that 65.20 area, then we start to look for shorts down to that 64.50. That would be yeah, a reasonable trade in, in my mind, because I think we're going to see some pretty good action there. Let's move over to the US dollar CAD. And again, we've seen a lot of volatility here. The 20 moving average has been you know, very, very strong, as you can see. We've had a series of higher highs and higher lows. Look, this week has produced the first lower high. Um, which and, and like I said last week, you know, even though it is higher high and, and higher lowering, you can see that the highs aren't that pronounced. And you can see that you know, really even this high, it is definitely higher than the previous one, as is this one uh, higher than the previous one again. But they aren't really there um, with a massive exaggerated move. So you've got to be a little bit mindful that the price action could be slowing down. But that said, it is a very strong resistance area. So I'm not really surprised by that. But this is the first time it's actually made a lower high before it's attempted to go down. But this candle here, you can see that it's had a very, very big rejection that the sellers tried to kick in, similar to the Aussie, but in reverse. Uh, and then the buyers have actually brought it right back up to the 20 moving average and right up to this support zone, again, trading above the 20 and the 50. So look, we are going to get a 20 and 50 moving average cross now. You can see it's already technically crossed. The gaps are already starting to show. So realistically, um, the time is now for it to find the support. If we get the support through here, the easy target's going to be up to the previous high at around 135.80. Um, uh, and then a, a break of that level would give us the confidence that we can trade it up uh, into the 136.40 uh, to 50 zone. So pretty good trading on the CAD and really happy to see it actually hold up because the technicals are holding that support level. So really good trading there. 
Now, if we see a breakdown, of course, and it starts to trade uh, lower and we see a series of lower highs and lower lows below the 20 and the 50 moving average, the obvious target is going to be that 133.80, which we know is a pretty reasonable level of support. So pretty good trading in this whole zone, really. Know where your levels are. Uh, you can intraday uh, or just scalp trade in between the heavy levels. And then once those levels are broken for daily, then we can look at a, a more sustained move. Over to the US dollar yen. Um, again, it's done all the things that we needed to do. Uh, this week, it's come back and tested that 150 level, which we know is very strong. Uh, from a technical standpoint, it's been very good, obviously. Came back down, tested it, um, and now it's bounced up and found itself at that 150.70 area. Pretty good, easy to get into on the smaller time frames. Of course, we know that this has been yeah, very, very highly likely once it did break the 150 that it was going to come back and test it, which it did. If you go to the smaller time frames, look, go to a 15 minute chart, you're more than likely going to see the series of higher highs and higher lows, which we did. Um, you know, it's basically uh, through here. You can see that once we got that, okay, in on a pullback to the 20 moving average and off you go. Okay. And then once you got a series of higher highs again, off you go again pull back to the 20 moving average, off you go. So pretty good trading. And it went all the way up to basically 150, 60. It's only scalping. It, look, it's not like you're getting really, really big moves, but when it does break a very key level, it's important to, to understand where, you know, those those next support and resistances are. So the next real support for this one is 150, 80 anyway. It's not very far away, but it did find extraordinary uh, strong support at the 150, which is no surprise given what happened here. But once it does break, the first target's going to be that 159. And then after that, you've got the previous highs at this point here at around that 151.80 area. So pretty good trading on the US dollar yen. Uh, if, of course, it turns around, uh, pretty easy, really. Once it gets back below the 150, uh, trade it down to the 20 moving average would be the target you want to be going for because that's going to be the first level of very serious support once that 150 is broken. But I wouldn't be doing that unless the momentum is well and truly uh, trending down on the smaller time frames. Over to the dollar index, uh, a very, very volatile session. Uh, this one still not closed yet, but you can see we had a very, very big push down all the way down to 103, um, basically 33, big, big drop. Uh, it is, there is a lot of support there, but I think that's more news related than anything else. We had FOMC minutes and, and the like uh, coming out this week. We've got all sorts of, um, yeah, the NVIDIA news was even affecting the whole market. So uh, the reporting on that, that affected the S&P more than, and the NAS more than anything else. But yeah, look, we're definitely seeing volatility here because of news and a big, big pull up to the 20 moving average. If it can maintain that level above the 20 moving average, that could be seen as a really strong bullish sign that the dollar index is going to continue its strength up. We've seen obviously a series of higher highs and higher lows, which have been pretty good trading all the way up. But um, yeah, very, very strong at this level here. But the euro, of course, is the one we'd want to trade. Um, and it did the same thing. It, it found support where it needed to, obviously, last week. Uh, up to the 20 moving average was the obvious trade. Uh, I know a lot of people got that up to the 108, which is great. Uh, you got in and out of that. It did push all the way up to, you know, 108.80 with this big wick um, that's happened in today's session. And like I said, that's a very big volatile wick. It's pulled all the way back down, of course, to, you know, 108.20. But that's a big, big rejection. No question about that. And if it closes like that after the end of the session, uh, it, it can be seen as a, a pretty bearish sign. But look, it, it hit the resistance that we know is there and um, it's trading again under the 50 moving average. If it finds itself trading under the 20 moving average in the next session or two, like if we're trading under the 20 moving average on Monday, I'd be looking at shorting opportunities back down to the 107 uh, on a series of lower highs and lower lows on a smaller time frame. But if indeed it stays up there and get now for me though, it needs to get up above the 108.50. It needs to get up this line here. If we get a close above there, I'd be looking at momentum uh, moves up to around that 109 uh, with, uh, you know, obviously the smaller time frames confirming that with higher high and higher low sequences. So good trading on the euro. And the big one, uh, the S&P 500, big uh, all-time high again, broken through to the 50, 80 now. Uh, look, it, it came back to the 20 moving average. It hovered there until NVIDIA did its reporting. It was a very, very big catalyst for what the market was going to do. There was a lot of waiting there um, and it reported well and off it went. So you can see it broke to a new high. Very difficult to get into even on the smaller time frame. So if you weren't, if you didn't jump in on the 20 moving average, which it would have been difficult to do because it was waiting on news and you know, we don't obviously don't really want to be trading news as the catalyst for a particular move in any uh, direction because it's really a bit of a guess but now uh, this is very difficult to trade at one at, at 50 80 i'd be looking for either reversal back to um 5000 and look for opportunities 
from that level to yeah potentially go long, which is you know a reasonable technical analysis uh, plan, or uh, wait for it to actually just yeah find it, it. It really hasn't pulled back all that much, and we're really waiting for an opportunity for it to come back and give us opportunities to either go long again from a good support base or start to short it on a series of lower highs and lower lows. So difficult to trade. I'd be really, really careful around this one because it could be just a bit of a blow off to, to, to really shake the trees for the last uh, of the buyers who are looking for these all-time highs. Very, very dangerous area. So just be careful around this area. Keep your trades pretty short and sharp and keep your stop losses in check uh, on the S&P 500 at these sorts of levels. So I hope everyone's had a great week's trading. We've had really good levels hit on all the things we talk about. And I know there are a great uh, a couple of opportunities that people got hold of. So well done on that. Have a great weekend. I look forward to seeing you all next week.